Welcome back to another video. Today we'll be looking at the SD to IEC for Commodore 64. Stay tuned. All right, so today we've got the C64 back out. What I got for this was the SD to IEC adapter, which is this thing here. Uh, this came from somewhere in Europe. I guess I'm not exactly sure where, but uh, they do a really nice job of making it look like it matches your C64. And they even have like a yellowed one you can get. I mean, maybe I should have got the yellowed one, but I don't know. Maybe someday I'll retrobrite this. I don't know. Uh, anyway, it's got the edge connector and serial connector. And your SD card goes in here. So like I'd mentioned in the previous video, I don't really know much about Commodore 64 operation. So they provide some instructions. Uh, too much work to do all this stuff. There's, yeah, there's a lot of work for it. Uh, so I just did what's in this box here. I downloaded the light SD card pack. I extracted it to a FAT32 formatted SD card. And I'm going to plug it all in and see what happens. Also included, well, I've got my SD card here. I'm using a micro SD card, but in an SD card adapter. It's fine. Same thing. <laughs> they also sent this little eraser edge connector cleaning tool. Definitely works. Probably not as well as some of the other stuff I have, but, you know, cool. Nice little touch. And they also sent this... Epic's fast load reloaded cartridge. This wasn't listed in the description. So I don't know if they sent it by accident or if I was supposed to get it. But either way I have it, so we'll uh, try it out. So that's all cool. So let's, uh, you can see my got my portable TV back here. So let's plug things back in, turn it on, make sure that it still works, it ideally does. And then we'll plug in some of these things here and see what we can do. All right, so I've got everything hooked up. I'll move the TV a little closer. Hopefully we can see it on here. Let's go ahead and switch this on. And it looks like we're still in business. So that's great. Let's adjust the contrast on here so we can see this a little better. All right, so you know, I wanted to try the S data IEC first, but I'm really curious about this fast loader. So let's switch it off and plug in this fast loader and see what it does. All right, it says ready fast load, so I guess it works. Again, I've watched plenty of videos on C64s and I know what a fast loader is, but don't really know how to use it anyway. So let's next plug in the SD to IEC. So I've got my SD card here. I'm gonna pop that in here, and then I'll plug this into the serial port and to the tape port. What's interesting on this machine when I got it, it had this on the tape port. The red dot was facing up, and it's just got a little resistor across the first and last pin. So I am not sure what that would have been used for. I haven't seen any of these in any videos, but definitely keep it. You know, it's a lot like the uh, 1541 floppy drive. Oh, I suspect that is quite intentional. All right, and then on the instructions, uh, we've got the load, quote, star, quote, comma, eight, comma, one, which everybody's familiar with, even me as a non-Commodore user. Yeah, the special characters on this keyboard are definitely not where I'm used to having them on my other computers, so certainly interesting. Device not present here. Are you missing anything here? I don't think I am. All right, so this connector cleverly labeled top, I had in upside down. I don't believe that hurts anything since it's just one power wire coming off of there and it was flipped, so it wasn't getting any power. So let's try that again with that plugged in the correct way. Yeah, now we have headlights on there. So let's run. Yeah, it works much, much better when you have it in the right way. This looks like this is their file browser. All right, so now that we have it working, I think what we can do is copy some software onto the SD card. So let me power it off. I'll take the SD card out and I will go load some software onto it and be right back. All right, so I've copied a couple of D64 files for games to the SD card, so let's put that back in. Turn the system back on and run. So down here at the bottom is my games directory. So I've got Bruce Lee, Bubble Bobble, Summer Games, Winter Games, Impossible Mission, Great Something Sisters, I can't remember, Ghostbusters and Boulder Dash. Let's just try to run Ghostbusters. Now it says on here that uh, loading can be very slow. It says standard 64 is disk loading. It's slow, 8 to 12 X speed increased if you buy something else, but uh, I'm in no hurry. <laughs> oh, it looks like it's working. What I don't have is a joystick for this, although I probably do. Um, I think there are definitely compatible joysticks I have around somewhere. Here, but I think this one might work with keys. We'll find out. The important thing is it's running. So we do have 
uh, this thing is executing code, which is super awesome. Yeah, I think we probably need a controller. Oh, what's my name? Okay. Uh, last comma first. Do I have an account? Uh, oh, that's right. This game has saves, which it gives you a string or a number or something. And if you have an account, quote unquote, you type it in here and then you start with money or whatever it was in there. So it doesn't actually save anything because obviously you can't write two cartridges. Um, but it's a kind of like cool way that they implemented a save game feature without having to actually save games. Uh, but I don't want to look any of those codes up at the moment. All right. So it seems like everything's working. So I think this is a, a quick video. Um, I'm gonna play around with it a bunch and make sure everything looks good. But yeah, I mean, system worked, didn't require any repair. Um, I'm the second owner. I've got this awesome looking uh, SD to IEC adapter for it. Uh, what it really needs is a time period correct monitor and not this uh, portable 16 by nine LCD. You know, it works for testing it, but we got to get this thing uh, on an old TV. So anyway, thanks for checking out SD to IEC. Uh, this thing works great if you're looking for one. Um, they are a little pricey, I think, coming from the UK. I don't remember how much I paid for this, but I think it was, with shipping, it was a total of uh, 75.97 Great Britain pounds. Um, but anyway, if you have a Commodore, you don't have cartridges, you don't have a way to get things on there, this thing seems like it's gonna work really well. So check it out. Uh, you can get it at the future was 8bit.com. Yeah, head on over there, get yourself one, and shipping was pretty quick. It came by a DHL. Anyway, enough rambling. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you in the next one.